Start by violating a rule here. Um, <laughs> TED Talks, right? I can, I can honestly say that the TED Talks have changed how I live, uh, from what I eat, to how I view education, to how I relate with my children. Um, I really like Brene Brown's talk on vulnerability, where she says, if you admit your vulnerabilities with other people, you create connection, and therefore you're stronger. So right now, around this world, there are hundreds of people that are depending on me to get this right. I'm very nervous. <laughs> All right, so my name is Matt Griffin. I'm an Army Ranger. Um, I spent the first few years of my young adult life on the very forefront of US foreign policy. And I did that because I wanted to make a change in the world. I wanted to do good things for other people. This is Afghanistan. This is the Chagall Valley. Whether you know it or not, Afghanistan is a very beautiful country, and the only thing that's more beautiful than the terrain is the children that live there. So me and 50 of my brothers, we were about 20 miles up this valley hunting Al-Qaeda in 2003. And we're standing at a courtyard one morning, and there's this little girl, and she's you know, peeking through the window to stare at the Americans that were standing in her village. And after a few minutes, she she got up enough courage to come stand in a doorway to stare at all the steely-eyed, barrel-chested freedom fighters, right? And uh, I reached into my pocket and I gave her a pencil. And she gave me a smile and ran off. Um, it's an educated crowd here, but I'm just going to ask, has, has anybody ever been in a fist fight? Right? You know that sound when somebody takes one to the face and everything e kind of echoes in their nasal cavity and their mouth and you know they're not going to survive that hit? Well, I heard that sound. And I, and I poked my head out the door of the, of the courtyard, and it came from that little girl. Her older brother was standing over her with that pencil in her hand, in his hand. And when she got up to her hands and knees, she didn't look at him. She looked at me. It was my fault. Does anybody else in this room have the feeling that Afghanistan is going to be another Vietnam? that it wasn't worth it, all the pain, the sacrifice, and the hardship. Yeah, I felt that way for a very long time, too. Uh, so once I departed the military in 2006, I started traveling the world, trying to serve my country in other ways. I was in Asia, Africa, and all throughout the Middle East, and I have this idea that happened in Afghanistan. Um, now, this is a TED Talk, so I know you guys want to see information to back up ideas, so if you'll bear with me for a few slides, we'll, we'll get back to the pretty pictures. All right, so this is uh, the GDP of Afghanistan per capita between 1960 and 1978. And as you can see, there's a steady kind of upward trend that you would expect of any nation. Uh, there's a couple dips in there that are directly tied to some upheaval. I'm not going to go into it because you're going to see a little trend right here. So this is the GDP per capita of Afghanistan between 1979 and 2001. And it didn't occur to me until I put this slide together that that is the year I was born and that is the year I was commissioned in the artillery. I've never seen a straight line depict an economy of a country in a downward trend over two decades. But it happened during our lifetime. Now, since this is a did you know, did you know since 2001, the GDP of Afghanistan per capita has increased by a factor of six? Six X in just over a decade. Can you imagine our economy being six times as big in 2025. Now, let's see it all together here. That's what it looks like. Isn't that pretty cool? First time I saw this slide, I was dumbfounded. Like, ah, oh, this is awesome. It's working, right? We're doing something good, right? Yeah, tons of years of conflict, but there's conflict. But, but look at what we're doing for that country. This is why it happens. Persistence, creativity, and respect. Now, for the visually impaired, that's a loaded 40-foot container on a 20-foot truck. <laughs> and there's 10 guys that are on the cab, on the container, and on the boom, right? That is persistence, creativity, and a healthy respect for physics. <laughs> All right? 
so now I've seen this graph, I'm seeing this data, I'm on the ground, I'm watching all of these people work, and these guys are so hungry. They are persistent, they are creative, and they are respectful of the opportunity that has been provided to them. So I'm watching this happen, and I have to think to myself, is there any other time that this has happened in the world, right? So go back, look at a little history. Now, up until 1945 or so, Europeans had a very healthy and reliable relationship where they would use lead as a currency of exchange about every 25 to 50 years, right? And it wasn't until they had a conflict that was so devastating, so crushing, so debilitating to where they had to stop and rethink of how they acted toward one another. Instead of exchanging lead, they exchanged ideas, technology, art, music, food, all things that were more valuable than war. That's what it looks like on a graph. There's Germany, Austria, France, and the UK, countries that were just hell-bent on killing one another are now completely dependent on one another. You can see it. They work together. Right, so this idea that I had uh, happened at a combat boot factory right across the street from where we took this picture. So I'm standing there and there's 300 guys and girls and they're working to make combat boots in Afghanistan. It was amazing. They were supporting thousands of family members. They were supporting their community. They were helping defend their country. And the feeling of despair that I had for so many years during all of my deployments and years after the military started to go away and it was replaced by another feeling. And it was a feeling that turned into action. That feeling was stoked. Hang with me here. I was stoked. <laughs> so stoke is defined as a very strong emotion that encourages or incites. What I saw there from all the data, looking back at history and watching it happen in front of me, I was encouraged. I was incited into action. And a small group of people, we bet that we could manufacture stoke. That's what it looks like. <laughs> all right, so um, you've sat through all these talks and then you got a long haired guy with beard and wearing flip flops and he just told you the stoke is in the shape of a flip flop. So we get this look quite often. <laughs> <laughs> they, they thought so too, it was pretty funny. So the concept is very simple. We were gonna take a handful of special operations veterans and we were gonna deploy back to countries affected by conflict. We were gonna take military capacity that was established to manufacture tools for war and we were gonna manufacture commercial products for peace. And then we were gonna ship them all over the world and we were gonna help a whole bunch of people along the way. That started in 2012. Started with a handful of people, that turned into 10, then 100, then 1,000, then tens of thousands. And this is what it looks like now. So did you know that the United States and Colombia established a free trade agreement? And this agreement was established to help a country recovering from decades of a narco-financed insurgency. Does that sound familiar? This is our factory in Colombia, working at full capacity, right? Sourcing all of their materials locally, there's vertical stoke in Colombia. Did you know that during the Vietnam War, the United States dropped between 250 to 280 million landmines on Laos or Laos? That's a B-52 load of munitions every eight minutes for nine years on a country where we're at war with. And right now, there are tens of millions of those landmines on the ground threatening its people. This guy, he's an artist. He's in one of 20 families, and what they do is they take the scrap recovered from the ethical clearance of landmines, and they melt it down, and they turn it into jewelry, and into spoons, and other products that are shipped all over the world that fund more landmine clearance. That's Lyle Stoke. Did you know that roughly 15% of women in Afghanistan are literate? 15%. Think of how easy it is to radicalize a child who has no education because his mother did not understand the value of an education. This is a woman-owned and woman-operated factory in Kabul, Afghanistan, running at full capacity, making sarongs and scarves. And each piece they manufacture help puts a little Afghan girl in school. Right now, there's a little girl in school who is stoked to be there.
did you know I just spread some stoke? <laughs> right? So once you hear this story, you cannot hear it. You're now part of a community of people that know that it's not only a good belief and idea, it works. You can manufacture peace through trade. If we are persistent, if we are creative, if we are respectful for one another, we can put down our differences, we can solve our problems, and we can depend on one another. Welcome to the Unarmed Forces. Thank you.